something said, something saw, somebody we prayed for, but I want to believe for you right now, right here, before we close tonight, this is our live program, that you'll see your first miracle. This, you tonight will believe with us that we'll speak your miracle, it's the Holy Spirit speaking, not me, that the miracle that you want to be healed, to be inner healed, that relationship is broken, your kids are leaving, that drug addiction, whatever that is, that job you lost, believe God is all here right now. As we speak the miracles we've seen and done, not us, but Jesus himself, all power is the Father's. Nobody does. Jesus said he didn't even do the miracles. The Father did. So I want you to understand is as we get into relationship, as Dr. Earl talked about, as Pastor talked about, that as we get closer and closer, he reveals his power and loans it to us. We all have our measure of faith. We found out that faith wasn't the answer because the disciples asked Jesus, pray for us for more faith. He said, no, you don't need more faith. You've got enough. Why? Faith of mustard seed. Do you know how small that is? And guess how big it grows. The roots, that mustard seed, that plant, is, uh, that tree is huge. Here's my point. Is when we understand that it's our limited to our unbelief. That's what he was talking about. If we have limited, that the greater one is greater than what we know. Now, if we don't get healed tonight, don't be discouraged. God is working on you as your character grows, as you walk in him, as you walk it out. So many parts in scripture, I'll give you one real quick and I'll turn it over to Dr. Earl. The lepers, they came to him and he says, along your way as you study them out, there was eight to ten days. Go to the priest, who are the priests, who are the doctor of the day, you'll be healed. Now, it didn't happen instantly. It happened over time, and one came back to get whole. That doesn't mean the other ones weren't healed, but he came back whole. Think of how horrific that leprosy is. It's worse than AIDS. I mean, they had a scream, they're unclean, they, the body parts were falling off. I mean, it was, they were just a mess. Can you imagine the emotional trauma they had to go through? But he was emotionally and physically healed. So I'm here to tell you this. Now is your time. Now is your season. As you walk with God, believe. I'll close with this. Remember the issue of blood, and I want to get into that a little later. I'm going to ask Dr. Leland about how, remember when the woman of the issue of blood at 12 years, she touched the hem of the garment. How did she know this? As Pastor said, somebody had to preach the word to get her faith up to believe. So she went and touches him. Coincidentally, it was blue, and I'll get into that in a minute. Blue means healing, coincidentally. Anyway, he said, who touched me? Now watch this. He was in a, a street of a lot of people. How would not, the disciples even looked at him. What do you mean you touched me? There's a lot of people bumping into you. Why weren't they healed? We're going to ask pastors tonight. But let's start with Dr. Earl. Let's start with this thought. If your first miracle, where were you? What did you say? What was God leading you to do? Uh, I was actually at church on the way in the valley, Jack Hayford's church. And I was, I had gone through a bunch of, I'd gone through a lot of different things a lot, and I was, had been before going through inner healing and deliverance for myself. Now I'm there and I'm praying for others so that I'm being used to deliver others and heal others. And I'm praying for a woman, and literally as I'm praying for her, she flew backwards about four feet. Mm. And everyone is like looking like what did you just do and i'm like i, I don't know i have no clue I, I, i've never seen anything like that before and for me a long time before part of why i turned away from god was i saw some different miracles at calvary chapel i'm logical i'm a project manager i couldn't handle what i saw and so wow. i actually pulled away and then god later pulled me back there and now I see miracles all the time and I saw my wife pray for people and miracles happened last night here. Hallelujah. That's a good word and she did. I want to give you a thought. Here in America, we see three miracles a day. When we wake up, we have a roof over our head. 90% uh, of the country don't have that opportunity. The second point is we have clean water and we have food. Those are three miracles. We eat at least once a day here in this country. Now think about it. A lot of different countries don't even eat once every three days. So we're really blessed here. So watch this. In Hebrews 10, 35 says, trust and confidence in who? Him, the one that we serve. So that is all true. If we trust him to feed us, we trust him to house us, he trusts us to have water. Why can't we trust him for other things? Pastor, we'll go to you. Teach us that point. Yeah, Jesus is walking through the marketplace, I'm assuming. 
he's being led by that religious leader to go and heal his daughter. But in the midst of that, somebody touched him with a wooden one that hit you a box. I want to make this statement. Was it an uh, instant miracle? Now watch this. She's been believing for how long? 12 years? Was it instant? Pastor, your thought. People are pumping into him. Why weren't they healed? Well, the miracle was instant. Instant. She suffered for all that time. Been to many doctors that couldn't help her. Uh, I can relate. I've been healed with cancer and time to allow. I've had, all, I've had all kinds of healings, you know, that have happened in my body and seen too many miracles for anybody to argue with me about miracles. Miracles are, are part of the, the Christian life. We believe in miracles. Uh, but the lady did something. She heard about Jesus and then she said, she said, she opened her mouth and said it. If I touch him, I shall be made whole. Exactly. And as soon as she touched him, virtue went out of him, which is the anointing. You don't have a miracle. And everything that happens in the natural happens first in the spirit. And what she did is she did something spiritual. She said, I believe if I touch him, I'll be healed. The doctors couldn't do it in the natural, so she had to begin with the spiritual. And the anointing that flowed out of him was the force and power of the Holy Spirit that was on him and in him. But when it all settled and said and done, Jesus looked at her and said, Daughter, your faith made you whole. And that's all you need is faith in God. Can, can I tell of a miracle that's yes, happened at a crusade? Because yeah. that's what I felt prompted in my spirit. I was doing a, a crusade in Arizona. Where were we at time? And uh, people get healed, all kinds of things. But there was a Methodist minister that came up, and she got slain in the spirit. About, as you were talking about people falling out, she fell out on the ground, got up, completely healed. Unbeknownst to me, she was uh, had, a, had a ministry to the local juvenile hall. And she wanted me to go and minister to the kids in the juvenile hall. Mm. Here's a miracle for you. All night long, I was up praying, God, what do I tell them? What do I tell them? Tell them I love them. Just tell them I love them. And so I want to tell you that miracles happen when you recognize how much he loves you. Every single kid in the entire juvenile hall gave their heart to the Lord and all wanted to, be, to experience falling out of the power of the Holy Spirit, including the workers who came out and said, would you pray for me? So the greatest miracle to me is salvation and when you recognize that he loves you you put your faith in him i'm telling you miracles about to happen because god is a miracle working god hallelujah good work pastor tim you've seen a lot of things at the church where have you seen maybe a, a miracle your first miracle or maybe you prayed for somebody help us well the first miracle that i can think of is as many times as i have fallen into different things uh one of my friends, I didn't realize it at the time, but I learned that he was a Satanist. Mm -hmm. And my mom, or not my mom, but yeah, my mom asked me one time, what type, you know, what's the hold does he have on you? How come you keep running around with him? And it's like, he doesn't have a hold on me, mom. At least I didn't think so. I think the greatest, one of the greatest miracles is God taking me, pulling me away from him. Good work. That's a really good word, Pastor. Let me give a quick testimony. I see miracles every day because I expect a housekeeper comes up to me at the office and says, I'm hurting. She doesn't have insurance. She didn't say anything. She says, I'll pray. I go, let me pray. You're healed. That's all I said. Yeah. Just like that. I said, you have to believe. She came back with a letter. She could even speak English barely. We we're kind of communicating with sign language. And she says she didn't feel the pain because it was Jesus. I said, we have to pray. She says, I already am praising you. Isn't that interesting? Again, it's always the Lord. Here at Vision TV, Don Durrell and I always go to different people that come up to us and ask, I don't know if I can do this. I can't speak on the television. Yes, you can. You have the anointing. How many times have we spoken to people? How many words have we given? How many people are testifying of with the greatness of God? That is the miracle of who he really is. How many people are out there worshiping God? Is anybody getting this when they're sitting there at the house struggling with health, somebody struggling with sickness, maybe your kids are sick, They're, you have no money, you have no insurance. They're, that's why in the third world countries, I've traveled the world, you say, hello, everybody's healed. 
Why? Because their faith is so high. There is no unbelief. There is no second chance. Here in America, they got insurance, they got doctors, they got doctors, the doctors, they got psychiatrists for the doctors. They got everything. So our chances here, there's too many, it's not that they don't have faith. I'm not saying that. It's just their unbelief is high because it's too easy to get a second opinion. So what I want to say right here, right now, your healing, your miracle, your time is now. That job that you're looking for is on the way. Now watch this. God works through people. He can do anything he wants. He doesn't need to, but he does it to prove a lesson to teach us. He's setting this up for you. I'm telling you, you'll know that he will get the glory. There'll be nobody that you're sitting with can say, I referred you to that job, or you saw it in the paper, or you looked on the internet. No. Somebody's going to come up to you and say, they're looking for this. Go down there now. And that's God speaking to you, saying the job is yours. Watch in seven days what God will do to you. I thought it was very interesting today is the fourth month and the 10th day and the 19th year. Four means creative works. Today, 10th means testimony. Watch this. God is using creative ways to give your testimony, having you hear testimonies, receiving testimonies so you can give to others. And 19 means faith and hearing. How do we build our faith? By hearing God's voice clear. I'm telling you, today is your day. Get your faith out before the end of the program. The pastors will pray for you. Pastor, your thought. Yeah. Tell us where your church is and tell us about some of your miracles. We're at 781 South San Jacinto Street in San Jacinto, California. Thursdays is intercessory prayer. If you're an intercessor, come out and help us pray. We're believing for revival all over across California, United States. There's a tsunami of God's glory on its way to the world. Uh, but Saturday nights is miracle service at 6 o'clock. And come on out and believe God for a miracle. Uh, tell us about that church. I was in uh, Buenos Aires, and I was just sharing with, with uh, Brother Ken uh, before, during the break. I was down in Buenos Aires, and a pastor friend of mine asked me to come and speak to a group of pastors. Uh -huh. And uh, he really already had his agenda, and so I was new to the city, and he just met me. But he said, will you just speak to us for about 10 minutes? And the glory of God fell upon that yeah, place. Yeah. I'm telling you, it was divine disorder. Some were singing in the spirit, because there is a divine disorder when we get out of our order and get into his, and it's awesome. But some were singing in the spirit. Others were, were just praising, and, and just the glory of God was in that place. Good word. And a lady came up to me who had been an intercessor for uh, Benny Hinn's ministry and different ones, Carlos and McConnie, different people that hold crusades. And she gave me a word, but while she was giving me a word concerning my job in Argentina, I saw a tsunami rising up out of Buenos Aires. At the same time, I saw a tsunami rise up out of London. Wow. That one became two waves, and one of them came across Iceland and Greenland and Nova Scotia and Canada, down in the United States. The other one went across over into Europe and begin to flow around down in, into Africa and on, on down. And the, the wave that was coming down to the United States, it met the wave coming from Argentina to the Mexican border. That's it. And a big splash happened right here in the United States. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He said, son, there's a flood coming, but this time it's different. The glory of the Lord is going to fill this earth. He's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And as we're here and they're going out over the airways, I just want to say to America and the nations that are receiving this, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You're living in the best days. We're going to see the glory of God. In spite of the evil, Isaiah says that gross darkness will cover the earth. But he said that my light and my glory is going to rise upon you. So I, I'm expecting it. I, I just believe it. And that's take that from the prophet, from the word of God. You get ready. There's a tsunami coming. And it's going to affect your household, your prosperity, your health, your marriage, everything. God has good stuff planned for you. Good word, Pastor. Dr. Earl, I feel like there's a teaching moment here. You need to help us understand more about He's going over to see um, Jesus. He gets off the boat. The religious leader says, come pray for my daughter. She's dying. And the woman of the issue of blood touches his hem. She gets healed. He goes, who touched me? But here, he thought the servants ran out. Here's where I want to go. He ran out and says, don't follow the master. It's too late. 
take us from there, what did Jesus do? And notice how he jumped in, didn't let the, the religious leader even say a word. He caught him from speaking ill in. He said no, and what happened? So you're talking about when when the child then they said was dead. But yes. He goes and yes, raises the child. Yes, thank you. And he threw everybody out. Right? Talk about that. Okay, so so I, I want to say this really quick. So the woman, so the woman touches Jesus. Okay, or she's desperate. Yes. Amen. So the people in the third world countries they're desperate. Amen. Here. People aren't desperate. That's right. That's and good. people can trust in the government and the provision of the oh, government and good. people yeah, versus good. trusting in God because they have no other choice. Absolutely. That woman, she had trusted in the doctors, trusted in everyone else for 12 years, finally got to a place where she's out of money, out of time. Good you don't know if she's good. ready to die. And she's, and she's believing that. now, mm. if I can just touch him, and now, as Leland said, she's declaring it. She's That's declaring good. my healing. No, no, she no. is declaring, this is what's going to happen to me. And so, you know what? There's power. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Yes. And that when good we work. are declaring yes. that we're going to get a healing, we're now just opening Expecting. up Absolutely. that. We're opening up the heart of God for him to move. So now, why does Jesus now tell the people, to not say negative things because he doesn't want them to speak death. Ooh. He doesn't want them to speak negativity. It's like he, what is he? He is there to do his father's will. That's it. If his father says, no, don't pray for that child. I'm not going to raise him from the dead. Jesus goes, I can't do anything. Amen. I can only do what my father's telling That's me good. to do. And I can only speak what my father's telling me to speak. Well, that's basically no different today. If that was good enough for Jesus, that's also good enough for us. Amen. If we're out trying to uh, do miracles because we're trying to glorify ourselves or glorify Ooh. our church, we're completely off. It should all be about glorifying the Father, glorifying the Son, glorifying the, the Holy Spirit. I mean, we're there to have... If a miracle doesn't glorify God and they don't encounter God in the process and they don't now get a closer relationship with him, then to me, so many ways the miracle was worthless. It's to for them to now see God's wow. goodness good. and his power yes. and to understand that, not just to say, oh, I'm healed and now I'm going to go off and do whatever I want to do. That isn't the point. So now Jesus goes there. He then goes to then pray for the child, everyone's saying, stop. It is probably no different, really, than Lazarus. He goes, after four days, That's good. that everyone's going, there's no point. Why are you even bothering? He's stinking. He, you know, it doesn't work. It's like, it's past the time. There's no hope. But you know what? With God, there's always hope. It's never too late for God when he chooses to do something because he stands outside of time. Amen. And so, you know what? He then goes in, just says, you know, speaks to the child, rises up, and brings back life. Hallelujah. Good, good, good work. Good teaching moment. Pastor Tim, to you. Tell us about another uh, t a time when you were involved in a miracle or spoken to somebody or just like you did earlier. Well, the biggest miracle recently that I've seen was on was uh, President Trump talking on Facebook I believe it was today uh -huh. and he made the comment that I never expected a president to ever say is he said we should not trust in the government but we should trust in God good word that's a mic dropping moment where we drop the mic here at Vision TV in the word Remember in the world when you see comedians or things of foolishness sometimes, but it's so good, so funny, so right on, so true that they drop the mic. You've seen it on TV, you've seen it on all the networks. That's what we do here. That was a drop the mic moment. Good work, Pastor. Back to you. So help us understand people are hurting. We've got to close here. I don't want to close one or all here, but we got to close. It's at the end of the night for the last part. Pray for the people who are expecting a miracle now. They really need Jesus to touch them. They're hurting. Do you sense a healing, a prophetic word? What is it that you think that God is telling you to pray for the people? Amen. Well, first of all, you need to become covenant-minded. This is covenant. 
Jesus shed his blood for you to have the right to receive healing. Healing is the children's bread. There's nothing you can do to work it, earn it, or anything else. You just receive it. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is here, and the anointing destroys the yoke, and it removes the burden. Amen. Jesus shed his blood both inward, because it says he was bruised for our iniquities. That means that he bled inward to heal your inner man, and then he also bled outward for your transgressions. And so you're covered, I mean, from head to toe, inside and out. The blood of the covenant was shed because he wanted to give you the free gift of salvation. And included in your salvation is healing for your body, healing for your mind. And then he says, Beloved, I wish above all else that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So, Father, I pray that faith, while the word has been being shared, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, that faith has stirred up in the hearts of those who have listened tonight. Our prayer, because there's power when two or three agree is touching any one thing, that we agree that the cancer, the diabetes, uh, the heart trouble, the emotional problems, the, the addictions, the the, the person who just wants to give up on life, all of those That's things right. that we just release them to you right now. And in exchange, we receive the love of a good God who proved it through his son, Jesus Christ. And I declare in the name of Jesus that bodies are being healed, that minds are being healed and restored, and that those things that have been lost, that God is restoring dreams and visions and callings and that those things that the devil stole he's been caught so we declare they receive back sevenfold mm -hmm. according to the word of God restoration and recompense now in Jesus name Amen good word wow that was powerful Pastor good work good work good work Jesus. Dr. Earl I feel like there's another teaching moment can you pray for us maybe encourage us a little bit and pray us out as we start to close So just feel like you need to know that you belong. That's it. You need to know Good that word. you belong and you're loved by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That you yes. are His child. But you need to come to the understanding. Not because we say it. Not because you have it in your head. He wants you to know it in your heart. He wants you to know it in your core beliefs that you're his child, that you belong. He wants you to be an heir. And he just wants you to know that he's there for you. He loves you. And I just feel like, you know, when you, when you get your heart's desire in alignment with his heart's desire for you, that's when all of a sudden it's like everything takes off. When it's to glorify you, that's not his heart's desire. But when we pray in his will, praying to glorify him. And you know what? Understand, for you to come to the full understanding that you're his child, that you're his son, that he wants to give you that spirit of adoption to where you then walk in as an heir to his throne, to, and that you understand that you are you have all the blessings in heavenly places Ephesians 1 to really understand Ephesians 1 3 through 14 to understand all those promises and blessings because he declares those for you he wants you to understand that for you to put those into your heart so now you live out of your heart out of your core beliefs so now you can receive his blessings, receive his love, and now you to pass it on to others. He wants you to do that so that you can truly walk the way he wants you to walk in his image with the mind of Christ that you already have. He wants you to understand that, to live that out, to believe it, mm -hmm. to declare it, to pray it, 
and then to take the risk to just live it out and watch what he is going to do when you humbly come to glorify him. In Jesus' name, amen. Well done, Dr. Earl. Pastor Tim, close the time in prayer. We know we only have a few minutes left, please. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to bring your word to the people. Not our words, but your words, Father. We just pray that the eyes and the ears of those that are listening to this program are really listening and hearing what's being said in their minds and their souls and that they step out and maybe become or create a miracle in your glory and in the name of your son Christ Jesus. Amen. Good work. Let me close with this one last thought because we're running out of time. Isaiah 43. God made a highway through the desert. This is your time. This is your moment. It's up to you to find your scripture. You to believe without a shadow of a doubt that God has called you to be healed. Why? So you can pray for others for their healing. Amen. Now, you might need a job. There's people around you that are homeless. The reason why you're getting a job is so you can show how you did it and God led you. Next thought. You desperately need to hear from the Lord. So he's prompting you with the prophetic call that you have to prophesy to others. What is prophecy? To encourage. It's the same one. They're the message. They're the messengers that are coming to your life to encourage you that God is saying this or that. I hear so many times the believer said, oh, I confirm that, or I don't witness to that. Sometimes we don't hear God plainly. Maybe the real prophet, like Dr. Earl, is saying something you maybe have not thought of because you're not hearing God correctly. He wants to speak into your life. They always say, I'll put that on the shelf, but it keeps coming back. That is God. I'll close with this. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9.12, it's not good for man to be alone. Pastor Leon very astutely said, we need a mentor. We need a church. It doesn't have to be four walls, but it's good if you go to an assembly to encourage each other, to understand each other, so they can speak to each other. It's not only to hear the man of God, but it's also to encourage each other. There'll be some times when we go, we are to minister to others, because the man of God has one message, but others have messages for you that what you're going through. They need to believe and pray and receive for you. Also, the kingdom is not right or wrong, but it's life or death. That's how serious it is. It's not that we're losing, but we're gaining. We don't lose our life, only to gain it later. So if we're really truly understanding God, that we really know he's the one that wants to heal us, because his word says that, just look. You can see any scripture, but take it in contact. If it's not now, when, Lord? If you're willing, look at the scripture. They come humbly, they kneel before him. They ask, are you willing? What does he always say? I'm willing. But are you right? How's your character? How's your walk? You're really hearing God? Do you think he's going to heal somebody that doesn't love him or act in his image? Think about it for a minute. He might need you to walk with him a little longer. He might need to show that character a little bit stronger. He might need to put you in a better place so all will see the glory of the Father. Not because you said it, not because the prophet said it, not because the pastor did, but God spoke to you. You're healed. Meditate on that. I'll close with this. It's uh, Isaiah 62 or 42 10. It talks about the progressive miracles. Look it up for yourself. Just because you're not getting healed right now as we're speaking it, you are healed. But there's always that but that you come up with. I'm not saying you don't have faith. We all have a measure of faith. That's not what I'm saying. But it's our unbelief. Check your unbelief. One person, the Father alone, just ask him. He's there. He'll do it. And his timing for his purpose. Consider this. The lady waited 12 years. It might have not, she might have not got the teaching right away, but as time went on, it was a process. I'll give you another one. The man at the pools of Bethesda for 38 years. It means work to be time. Watch this. Or work to labor. He was working to labor and argue with Jesus. He said, what do you need? And the man kept saying, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. I don't have, he makes all these excuses. Isn't that us? Why we're not getting healed? Or why we don't get that job? Or why we're asking God for money when we should be working? It says, man, I keep bringing that up because on Friday I'm going to talk about that. And I want to bring Pastor Liam back. I'm so grateful that you came. But until next week, I want you to really meditate. I'll say this prophetically. If you'll step out and pray like uh, Daniel did three times a day and ask God 
What is it that you want me to do for seven days until we see you next week with Dr. Liam? Seven times three is what? 21. What does 21 mean? The appointed time. I guarantee you in Greek, it does mean that. The appointed time for what? Something great's going to happen. I guarantee he will speak to you and encourage you into your miracle in Jesus' name. Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken. Of course, the great Dr. Earl is always with me. Pastor Tim will come back and, of course, we'll invite Pastor Liam. Tell us about your church real quick. Where can they see you and when? We're in San Jacinto, California at 781 South San Jacinto Avenue. And Saturdays is Miracle Service. And believe me, we've been seeing them at 6 o'clock p.m. And then if you want to come out and pray for Revival in America, uh, we're praying Thursday nights at 7 o'clock at the same location. And we're believing for Revival in your house and all across America and around the world. This is our time. Amen. Good word. So good to see you. I can't wait to have you back next week. Okay. Next, tomorrow, you don't want to miss it. I got uh, Dr. Glenn and uh, Pastor Apostle April. Join us, of course. The Apostle uh, Cora will be back with us. Don't miss that. Miracles are going to start happening. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.